Now, React came out in 2013, but what do we have before then, before React? Well, the front-end landscape was very different. Initially, back in the 90s and early 2000s, we just had basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML displayed the text on our web pages, CSS the styles, and JavaScript allows us to have some interactivity in a website. And initially, it just started with simple forms, where we send from the backend when we go to a URL, all these files, and when a user, let's say, submits a form, we simply send that back to the server to store that information. Now, if a user clicked on, let's say, a link in the page, well, once again, we simply request the new HTML file and the new page from the server, and that gets sent to the front end. And that's how websites worked for many years. But there's a problem here. You see, all these websites were run on different browsers. And all these browsers were worked on by different group of developers. So each one of these browsers implemented, well, their browser differently. So what happened was, as we wanted to use more and more JavaScript in our web pages, we had to account for all these browsers that sometimes worked differently from each other. And we had to accommodate JavaScript to work with these different browsers. Now, eventually, we had jQuery come out, which allowed developers to easily interact with the DOM or the document object model across all these browsers. You see, back in the day, if we went to, let's say, Hacker News over here, clicked on Views, Developer, and then Developer Tools, and we went to Elements here, this is the DOM, the DOM that, well, is our page. It displays exactly how our page should look like, and it's a tree-like structure. And JavaScript, all it does is modify this DOM. You can remove elements, you can update elements. And although there's now more similarities and compatibility across different browsers, back in the day, we didn't have that. So jQuery made developers happy because it had a unified, easy API that kind of looked like this. Instead of a developer trying to think about how to work with the DOM in each of the different browsers, jQuery said, hey, we'll take care of that complexity for you. Just this is the syntax we'll use that works across all browsers. And you can manipulate the front end or the DOM however you want. So that was great. But with this power, developers started building bigger and bigger applications. Instead of just something small, we started getting these massive, massive applications like Facebook, where you got to log in, look at the newsfeed, message friends. And as websites turned into these full applications that people can interact with, besides just requesting more and more pages like a blog, well, libraries like Backbone.js came out because, well, our JavaScript files started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Libraries like Backbone.js allowed us to organize these JavaScript files. And because it became easier and easier to work with the DOM, we had the birth of a single page application. You see, traditionally, we just had HTML files for each page. And every time we moved to a different page, we would request from the server, well, the HTML file, the CSS file, and the JavaScript file, which usually contain jQuery, for each time we clicked on a link. But with more advancement, like we had with jQuery, Backbone, and something called Ajax, we now had a different system. What generally happened now is we focused less on HTML and a lot more on JavaScript. You only load the application code once. Instead of us making new requests to the server where we returned a new document, instead now our applications acted more like a desktop application where we stay on the same page the entire time and the JavaScript file simply changes or updates the HTML file or the DOM to display new things. So you were able to sign into an application and interact with that application without ever speaking to the server anymore. And this way of 
writing applications or single page applications became really, really popular. And in 2010, AngularJS, which was created by Google, really became the standard way of building applications this way. Now, unlike jQuery, Angular allowed developers to build these large applications by forming these containers that, well, wrapped your project. And because it was created by Google, it had a lot of power because people said, well, this is the way that we should build things. Everything's organized. We have these large JavaScript files, but we can organize them this way. You had code now that now had better containers where you had things like controllers, views, and models. And this idea of a model view controller where each part of the application or each JavaScript file was divided into different things that it did. This idea of organizing our large code so they're easier to work with as teams get larger and larger really made Angular JS popular. But there was a problem. You see, things started getting more and more complex. Because of this, as things get bigger and bigger, more things have to happen. Users are clicking on this button, which changes this area, which in turn changes this area, which now has to display this information. We have more and more complexity now. And although frameworks like AngularJS came out, people started to notice it's getting harder and harder to find bugs in the code and understand how each part of the app was affecting the other. Meanwhile, Facebook developers were finding it hard as well on their end to maintain their app, especially their Facebook ads app. You see, the Facebook ads app got more and more features. More and more people were added to the team. Now, the growing number of lines of code, the growing number of people working on the app, their app became really, really difficult to handle. And each update would cause more and more issues where you had all these arrows relating to each other, pointing to each other. And after a while, the engineers of Facebook just couldn't keep up with the way that they had created this app. They needed to upgrade their code base. And this isn't just special in the front end world. This is all over programming. It's why we need good architecture. We need to think about how we organize our code, how we manipulate data, and how that data flows through our programs. So Facebook came up with a solution. And that solution worked really, really well for them. That in 2013, they released React to the developer community at JSConf 2013. And their solution was really, really good. And it took off because React developed a whole new way to build front-end applications. Now, it also happened that in 2014, AngularJS realized that the way that they've architected their framework just didn't allow good applications to be built anymore. So they decided in 2014 that they're going to rewrite the entire library, call it Angular. But because they wanted to do an entire rewrite, a lot of people during that time moved to React. So combined with the fact that AngularJS was getting a complete new rewrite, Facebook was backing React. And the great principles that React introduced made it what it is today. That is, it became the most popular front-end tool with the most job demand across the world and being used by very large companies like Airbnb, Uber, Netflix, Twitter, Reddit, Pinterest, Wix, PayPal, Stripe, Tumblr, Walmart. However, what made React so great? What were these principles that made it jump from something that Facebook used to something that developers all over the world use. Let's find out in the next video.